you want us to know about um, either partnerships or work that you've done with the labor movement and where you see us uh, cementing, or as President Trump says, making allies into real partners going forward. And um, why don't we start with <coughs> Senator Bruce. Uh, you know, it seems to me that history tells us that every now and then we have to revisit a battle previously won. And I think this is a, you know, it was a 20 year struggle before, it was a 20 year struggle before Ohio had basic rights for public employees. The right to go to a bargaining table, the right to a grievance procedure and so forth. And so, uh, it took 20 years to get there. That this law has worked for 27 years. Thousands of contracts have been settled. Thousands of grievance procedures settled. And and so here we are, reverting back to where we were 27 years ago. Ohio had had what was called the Ferguson Act, and it said essentially no public employee will strike. And if they do, and if ordered to return to work, if they don't return to work, they're fired. Now that's essentially what's left now. I think it's a, it's a neat and conferred bill. No way to resolve impasse. You know, no grievance procedure. And so here we are revisiting the past again. And uh, I, I think it's going to work. But believe me, the big time folks that are raising big time money, uh, who, who are higher people, who know every trick of human emotion, and deception, the, the ads will be coming, and so it'll be pitting working people against working people. And so, and I know this is a great turnout, and all of you bring a perspective that should be very helpful, but it will be a struggle. Thank you. Sure. Um, well, of course, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, of course, the NAACP is a civil rights organization, so we. Um, wholeheartedly believe that this is not just a labor issue, but it is a civil rights issue. Um, of course, and this is the issue that we need to take hold of and really capture and uh, get control of because uh, the NAACP has a strong conglomerate of youth and college, and they're the ones as well that are going to be affected in the long run. Um, so that's just one of our our biggest platform, using our young people to help mobilize and educate about this issue, even though they aren't affected as of yet. Um, but using our whole membership to really push this um, and become partners and do what we need to do to make sure the word gets out. Um, the NAACP has always been on the forefront of civil rights issues. That will never change. We will always be here. We will always support and do what we need to do. So we're just really excited to be here. Um, we're just ready for what's next. And we just look forward to a successful outcome from this. Thank you. Joe Kreitzer with the Union Veterans Group. Um, you know, as a veteran myself, I see these young men and women who are going to be returning soon. Um, as they're starting to come home, they're going to be looking for decent jobs, and they're not going to be here. Uh, we're having a hard time keeping our people employed today that are already here, let alone our vets when they come home. I don't see this as just being an SB5 attack. I see this being as a, an attack on working people from many different perspectives. SB5, the, the voter repression that's coming through now. So there's, there's many other bills besides just that that we're going to have to be working on over the next several months, maybe in the next several years. But veterans are going to be highly, highly exposed to the to the downfalls of these bills and the way that they're moving forward. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. Honored to be here. Uh, Rick Henderson, Five Minutes Sigma. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is that, you know, it is a tackle on the community. The number one thing as it is as far as uh, education goes, the funding, we've, uh, we've had to renegotiate our contract. I'm a Worthington City school teacher, and we've always had to win-win policy in our contracts. We've never been on strike. We almost went on strike several years ago, but once everyone understood the value of the win-win contract, we've never, ever been close. We, uh, I've been in Worthington for 24 years, there have been four times where we have taken zero raises. And at the point in time where I first started teaching school, we didn't have to pay for our health care. You know, one of the biggest draws for me to go into education was coaching, teaching, and loving kids, as well as the benefits. I mean, our retirement system was one of the best, and uh, that's something that we're trying to really strive for. And uh, I was talking to President Berger earlier, the key is, is getting our people out to vote. 
that's that's what we really have to do. We have to strive to get our people out to vote. And uh, being a part of the Greek organization, uh, we're going to do that. We're going to fight, fight, fight because this is an attack on everybody. And uh, the bottom line of it is, I think we just need to stay in tune, get our word out. Let's be proactive. We're in a little reactive mode right now, but that's okay. We can't go back and redo that. So let's stay proactive, get out there, and, and fight. Before we go to the next speaker, I didn't know if President Trump or President Berger wanted to respond to any of the comments that have been made so far. I, I would just like to be very <coughs> brief about two things. Uh, one, uh, I, I wanted to, to reiterate what you said about civil rights and workers' rights. Uh, Dr. King actually gave his life uh, at the Memphis Sanitation Strike, uh, where men uh, were treated so poorly that they had a sign around their neck that simply said, I am a man. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be recognized and have the dignity uh, of a worker. And he also said one other thing. Uh, he said, it does you no good to have a seat at the counter if you can't afford to buy the hamburger after you're there. Mm -hmm. And that was tying together. Uh, economic rights and civil rights, and we in the in the labor movement particularly have a special responsibility uh, to protect uh, and make sure uh, that those rights stay together and no worker is discriminated against. And uh, I wanted to just reiterate our commitment to that. And, and uh, I want to say this uh, to you, uh, Joe. Uh, I, I get a, uh, it's a little tiring when I see people cynically waving a flag uh, that says we support our troops and then a uh, person comes home from Iraq or Iran uh, and they don't have a job uh, they can't find a way to, to live and some have even lost their homes they've been foreclosed on after they've been there and we fought and we tried to fight with, with our veterans group that you're well aware of led by Mark Ayers uh, of the building trades uh, to prevent that from happening uh, and uh, if we're really going to support our troops, it means giving them the right to the American dream like everybody else. Yeah. So I just wanted to say those two things. Yeah, let me add very quickly, if I could, um, uh, Joe and, and Mr. Henderson. Uh, I agree, this is not just a referendum on a bad bill. And this is a bad bill, an unprovoked attack on working families in the middle class. But this is a referendum on the vision of the state of Ohio and what we want this state to look like, and what we want this state to be, you know, fight for the middle class. And this governor and extreme forces, as Senator Branstill said, will be coming after us. Now, we've got, we've got truth and fairness on our side, and we also have a field game that each of our organizations working together will overcome uh, the type of extreme tax that we'll see on television by the moneyed interest. But this, to be clear, is a referendum on the vision of Ohio. This governor had a chance to take two paths. One path was uh, the path to raise the bar for all workers, try to get our private sector workers back on the job and back in the middle class. Or he could take the path that extremists in Wall Street, profiteers have taken, which is a race to the bottom in which workers everywhere lose. And we know what the decision was, and we're going to fight like heck. Uh, to reclaim this state come November the 8th. Okay. Hi. Thanks again. My name again is Katie Hines with the Center for Community Change. I want to thank Mr. Talley, Mr. Berger, and Mr. Tronka for being here with us in Ohio um, today. And I wanted to, um, my organization works with the world of people in communities of color. And we, and I know you were on the, uh, the ad about the American Dream House Parties that happened across the country this weekend, about 1,500. Um, in Ohio, we helped organize over 100, which were, uh, which were union folks, community folks, church folks, all getting together to talk about the American dream and what it should be. And I don't think anybody around here will be surprised what the major piece was, which was good paying jobs with benefits, was what our American dream was and still is, and we'd like to see that happen. So I'll tell you a quick, very quick story. I was in a room with about 20 people, um, from high school students to retirees. 75% of the people who were workers in that room were had been workers started their careers as public employees. Mm -hmm. um, most of the room was full of African American people. Mm -hmm. um, and they and many of them also retired as public employees and they saw them their lives go from poverty as children to being in the middle class at, because they were public employees with benefits and they had homes in Cincinnati and places where in communities where we still need to keep our homes and foreclosure rates are so high. 
And these retirees were so concerned, not about themselves, but about their grandkids. And that's what this SB5 to me is about, is how we make this dream happen for all of our kids. And that's what our center is committed to. We have groups across uh, Ohio working to make the dream come true for them. And we're ready, we've been through phase one, as you said, going into phase two, but we're also ready for phase three, which is not being reactionary. We're going to defeat SP5, but also how do we continue to partnership beyond to make Ohio the best place it can be as we have before.